fun stuff to show you. And since it's Creative Tip Thursday, we are actually going to use a paint technique to distress this, um, I don't know what this is called. It's like a Lazy Susan for your dining room table. So we're gonna distress that. But before I get started, I got a package in the mail this week. And it just, it made me so happy that I wanted to share with y'all. So these are some of the new designs coming up. And if you're a virtual paint party member, these are some of the designs you're gonna be painting in the next couple months. So super excited. First of all, let me pull this off to the side and show you. This is November. She is so stinking cute. She's a reindeer. Um, she has freckles and a big bow, and she is so cute. But what is so awesome about her is I hear people all the time, they, they message me, and they're like, we have double doors. What should I do? Well, let me show you. Look, girl and boy reindeer. Perfect. Girl and boy reindeer. Okay? So, this is our virtual paint party piece. These will not be released on the website until November 1st when I release them to the virtual paint party members because they always get them first. So, um, November 1st, this set of cuties are coming to the website. Then, coming up over the next few months, I ordered our projects. And I can't remember what order they go in, so I'm just gonna kind of show you. We've got a gingerbread house that we're gonna be painting. We have, oh, I love this one. We have the Nativity. All of these are available on the website. We have the Nativity. It's fully etched, so just paint along or paint like paint by number. <gasps> Look at this. We have the Volkswagen Bug. And I don't know if you can see, but there's a heart in the middle. It's because this is a Valentine's design. And then I have a design all the way ready for spring. It's a cute little bunny. Um, this isn't a flower pot, so we're gonna kind of paint this flower pot super fun. But, so these are things that are coming up, but all of those designs are on the website. The reindeer will be on the website on Sunday. So stay tuned for that. And then I'm gonna give a sneak peek to two more virtual paint party designs. These will not be available until December and January on the website, but to my members, they get them next they get them december 1st and january 1st so this is one of them joy with an ornament in the middle and we're gonna do i think i think this is my plan um is on the joy ornament we're gonna do a nativity scene and write to the world so like joy to the world um but you can paint it however you want and then this a fun winter sled is going to be our January design. We've done um, snowmen for the last couple of years, so I thought I'd kind of switch it up. Okay, so all of these designs will be available soon on the website if they're not already. For the, uh, I'm trying to think, for the gingerbread house, the nativity scene, um, the Volkswagen bug, and the, um, oh, what was it? Ah. Uh, the rabbit in the pot, those will be our projects over the next few months. So you know how we did the Christmas moose this time, and don't forget to sprinkle if you wanna enter to win. Um, we did the Christmas moose, and then the next one that we'll do, I think it's the nativity scene. Um, but it might be, no, maybe it's the, um, I don't know, I'll have to look. All right, and if you missed it on Tuesday, we painted this little mini truck. This truck is available on the website in full size. And um, you can also purchase the um, template to cut out your own small one. All right, we're gonna get started. And the first thing that we are gonna do is I'm gonna grab some white chalk paint. Let me show you what I have. So I have this Lazy Susan that goes on my dining room table. It was originally this dark wood color. And a couple years ago, I painted it you can see, I painted it kind of this off-white, and I distressed it, but I didn't seal it. Um, and over the last couple of years, my kids have set stuff on here, and it has stained really bad. So, I'm going to grab some chalk paint. And friends, this is the Rust-Oleum chalk paint in linen white. 
this comes from Home Depot. Uh, I think I bought a two pack online for like 20 something dollars. And this is what I'm gonna use as my base coat. So let me put my apron on and we'll get started. So if you're just joining me, tell me hi, where you're joining from. If you would like to join our text list to get live alerts, which I'm so sorry about today again, um, but you can do that. All you have to do, uh-oh, this one's dried out. Um, I guess we're gonna use a different paint. Um, all you have to do to get on that list is text 740-273-8101. All right, we're gonna change plans and we're gonna use plain old acrylic paint. I'm getting all kinds of text messages, but I have no idea where my phone is. I guess that means it's close. All right, so I just got some plain old Anita's acrylic, and I'm just gonna get a big brush. This is just a big base coating brush, and we're gonna put a coat of paint all across. And it's probably gonna take a couple coats, so, and I might end up, I'm trying to think, that um, table in there, I have, let me do this, I have a, um, a curtain above it that is, oh shoot, it's um, blue, browns, and creams, so I may end up even doing something um, a little bit darker. Let's just play with it and see. All right, so just putting a quick layer on. Okay. I don't want any paint boogies, so if you see any of those, get them off. I do want to get my edges so I'm all the way around. And this is not going to be perfect, but that's okay. I always tell um, when people come to paint at the studio, I always tell them to leave their perfectionism at the door. Um, leave it out on the front porch, just shake it off. And that's what we're doing right now. We're shaking off that perfectionism because I really wanted to use chalk paint. But I guess I didn't have the lid on right and my chalk paint dried out. So we're just gonna switch gears and use acrylic. And you can see I just globbed it on there and now I'm just spreading it out. If you get any paint boogies, make sure you get them off. Because you don't want those on. How do you keep your paint brush hairs from coming out? I don't know. These don't. I, maybe it's... I mean, I even leave mine soaking in water for way too long, and my bristles don't come out. Um, what type of paintbrushes are you using? Let me know in the comments. These are, um, what I really love about these is they're plastic handles. So if I leave them in water too long, it's not as big of a deal. Now, yes, I hear you. I know I should take better care of my brushes, but um, I've honestly been using the same brushes now for about four years. And yeah, I add new brushes every now and then, but I rarely ever have to throw a brush away. So leaving them in the water for me is not that big of a deal. Okay, I've got some bubbles on here. It's probably paint boogies, but I'm just gonna let this dry um, I will probably slap it with a blow dryer yeah let me know what kind of brushes that you're using Rachel and um it may be the type all right I just went around the edges with my fingers and just got some of that paint off I'm from Walmart and Hobby Lobby hmm I'm not sure all right I'm gonna hit this with the blow dryer so y'all bear with me for a second because I want to be able to finish this project today.
everybody keep a blow dryer on their paint station or is it just me? Okay, I'm going to grab my sanding block and I'm just going to kind of lightly sand this because I do have some places where there was something in the paint. So I'm just going to kind of sand that off. Friends, I'm not sanding it hard. You keep, I love it. Um, but I'm gonna grab my microfiber towel and I'm just gonna kind of wipe this off onto my paint table right here. Get all that off. I'm gonna hit it with the blow dryer again just to bake it real good. in a couple areas and then we'll keep going. That's a good idea, Rachel, the little one. All right, friends, so this is um, almost dry. It's still a little bit tacky, but um, y'all give me just a minute. I'm gonna run grab something and I'll be right back. All right, sorry about that. Okay, so I had another, you know, I let this one um, dry out. I knew I had another one in the garage. So I went and grabbed that because I think it will work better than this acrylic and I'm almost out of my acrylic and all the rest is at the studio. Um, so let's change plans here for a second. I'm gonna open this bottle. This is, y'all see, it's, um, ooh. Glare is really bad. Hold on. All right, so it is the Rust-Oleum Chalked Ultra Matte Paint. I think that's gonna work better. Okay, so I've got to pull these little pieces off. It's got these. Um, my husband's having to work from home right now because he's having surgery tomorrow and he's quarantined. So you'll hear another voice in the house. That's what it is. All right, so I'm just gonna shake this up real good and then we're gonna do a coat of this. I think that's just about dry. Ooh. Okay, so I'm just gonna grab something and pop this open. And then we're gonna dip our paintbrush right into this can. and put the coat of paint on. Oh yeah, I like that better. I feel like this is just gonna give it better coverage. Now, I am gonna have to, so I think if you buy one pint, Rachel, I think it's like $17, but I bought mine online and it was a two pack, and I wanna say it was only like $22 for a two pack. 
but it's been a while since I bought it, so I'm not sure if they still carry the two-pack, but it was way more cost-effective to buy a two-pack than it was the single. And I don't use chalk paint a lot, but I've tried mixing my own and it was a disaster. And so this is, if I need chalk paint, this is usually what I use. It, yes, it was a very good deal. Like I said, it's been a while, but it's worth looking into. Alright, friends. I'm just trying to get all this covered up. Because I did have a lot of um, this color on here. I think from just the kids set and stuff on there and it's staining. Especially purple. There's a lot of purple stains on here for some reason. Pretty much covered. I'm doing a little bit more in a couple places. What am I painting? Melissa. So today is Creative Tip Thursday, and I thought we could do a fun, um, like a vintage technique on this Lazy Susan that goes on my dining room table. Painted it a couple years ago, but it needed a fresh coat, so I thought I would go ahead and do that. Okay, well, let me put the lid on tight this time. What paint do you recommend for glass and metal? Oh, girl, that is not my um, area of expertise. I am not sure. I'm sorry. I know that's not super helpful. Um but I don't want to give you the wrong answer. So, uh-oh, got something on there. All right, it's not perfect, so that's okay. We're now going to do the um, vintage technique on it. I'm gonna grab, I think I'm gonna grab a couple different browns. I think we'll grab, um, this is espresso. Flat paint tray, but I don't have one in here. All right, so I'm gonna do espresso, and this is a burlap color by DecoArt. This is a Michaels brand color, the espresso. All right, I've got those two on there. Now I do need something. Let's see. Let's do this. All right, so I've got just a board over here. You could use a paper plate, whatever you have. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna get most of the paint off of our brush. Which draft brush do I wanna use? I think we're gonna use this bigger brush. It's, um, the bristles are really flexible. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dip in, just kind of roughly, dip in this espresso color. Then I'm going to take on my board, and I'm going to get most of it off. All right, so I've got most of it off. And now I'm going to just drag this brush all the way around. Now I'm kind of spinning it as I go. I'm going to get a little bit more paint off of this board. By doing this, it's really just hitting the high points. Going back over, knocking some of that down. All right, it's kind of hard to see, but do you, did you make, the, no, I did not. Um, I did not make the Lazy Susan. It is, I just made one to paint my box. Yes, that's a great idea. Um, but no, I did not make this. It actually, I want to say came with, come with our table or did I buy it? I can't remember. All right, I'm gonna go back into the espresso. I'm gonna do that same thing where I wipe most of my paint off. Then I'm gonna start in the middle. I'm gonna drag my brush across. And I just want these lines to be somewhat straight. 
and it's just hitting the high points. But you would not go this way, only going one direction. And when I get to the edges, I'm just kind of lifting my brush, bringing it back across. If you have too much paint, like right there, that was a little bit too dark. So knock it down. But really, I'm just hitting all these high points. And you can do the same thing, get most of the paint off my board or off my brush and just pull across. The main thing is to make sure you keep going in the same direction because your wood grain would not be going all willy-nilly. All right, ah, it's looking so good. Okay, so now I'm gonna add that lighter color in. I'm gonna do the same thing, dipping in the paint, getting most of it off. Kind of, it's kind of mixing with this other color, this espresso. And then it's adding just kind of a third dimension color to it. And this is a very light color, this burlap. So I'm going to do the same thing across here, just adding in this lighter burlap color. We just want this to look distressed. Now, what we could do at this point, hello, Miss Kimberly. At this point, if we wanted to, we could go ahead and go back into our chalk paint. Let me reopen that. And, ah! We could dip in there same thing onto the board get most of our paint off and then we could just kind of hit this over the top and mute it if we got it too dark or if we just wanted to add a little bit more of the white back in so friends that is all that we're gonna do with good morning miss Robin with um, the distressing mute it just a little bit so the main thing is you want to kind of dry brush your paint on. Remember, you can always layer. And if you get it too bright, just paint over it or mute it with the main base color again. And let me show y'all what this looks like. Y'all see how it's just very distressed. It's just hit on the high points. The main thing is, and it's hard to see in the camera, but all of our strokes are going the same way. All right, so after you do all of that, you can seal it with whatever type of wax or spray that you wanna seal it with. And then I'm gonna stick it back on my dining room table. So I hope that that was helpful to someone. Um, when you're doing the outer edges, just make sure that you keep your brush strokes going the same direction. Um, and then when you're doing the inside, same thing, all right? If, um, if you get too many high points going different directions because of the layers of paint, you can always sand this down, get it really smooth, and then you can go back over and dry brush again. So I hope that was helpful for someone. If you want to get text alerts for new products, um, and live alerts, all you have to do is text 740-273-8101 and you will be added to that list. I hope you all have a great day.